Thank you. Thank you very much for coming out this morning. Uh, my name is Andres Tobar, uh, member of the executive committee of ACOLAO, Virginia Coalition of Latino Organizations. It's a pleasure to be here with you uh, as we come and meet with the legislators uh, to discuss issues of importance to the Latino community. And we are so delighted this morning as well to have a number of our elected officials who are embracing uh, many of our issues and who will be here speaking this morning. And I would like to begin with uh, Senator uh, Scott Cerdo to be our first speaker. Senator. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Reyes. Um, it's great to be here and it's great to have Bacalao here in Richmond. Um, I think it's a, uh, the uh, Hispanic community is a growing part of Virginia and it's a part of Virginia we need to hear from. Um, I think I've, um, for those of you who don't know, I represent the 36th Senate District. The 36th Senate District starts around the Woodrow Wilson Bridge, runs right down Route 1, all the way down to Stafford County. Uh, about 29% of my constituents, according to the U.S. Census, were born in another country. About 23% are uh, Hispanic, Latino, in origin. Uh, and it's the second most Hispanic Senate District in the entire state of Virginia. Senate McPike's District is only a little bit more than mine, maybe about 24.5%. So, uh, but um, I've, I've been in the House, I was in the House of Delegates for six years before I was elected. I represented basically everything between Fort Belvoir and Alexandria on Route 1. And uh, this, uh, the, the license issue came to my attention about two years ago, really prominently. I had a Hispanic town hall in my district. And um, I had a, uh, a lot of folks from the High Blue Valley area. And I spent about 30 or 45 minutes talking to them about issues that I thought would be important to the Hispanic community, education, Medicaid expansion, healthcare, transportation, uh, the widening of Route 1, transit, things like that, and then I opened it up for questions. The very first question I got was, what can you do to get us a license? <laughs> and that's what they wanted to talk about. And we spent about 20 <coughs> minutes talking about, about how a lot of people in my district, um, uh, how difficult it was to live in a community without government ID, and how hard it was to open a bank account, uh, how difficult it was to interact with the government, whether it's the police, if you need to call because you have a problem, um, what, how, how difficult it is to not be able to drive your child to a soccer game without having to worry about getting stopped or go to a grocery store or go to the doctor uh, or get to a job. And uh, a lot of people said that, you know, a lot of people end up in Maryland getting licenses in Maryland because Virginia doesn't get them and that's the way they get it and it's just not right. And I, I heard them and I listened to them and I thought this is something we need to do something about. Last session, Delegate Corey and I uh, started working on a couple of bills. I think we put one, you put one in, didn't you? Yeah, it wasn't even, yeah, last session. So yeah, we, we, put, we put one in, um, but um, you know, we needed a little more work. And you know, this year we're back, we're back in force. Um, I put in my, my, my bill, Kay has a bill, or Delegate Corey has a bill, the Boy School has a bill, and we also have a delegate, Republican delegate, uh, Rob Bloxham, who's put in legislation. So we actually have, we have bipartisan support this year, which I think sends a strong message that this is an issue that, that people are ready to deal with. Uh, and, um, and I've already mentioned a lot of the reasons, aside from, aside from the quality of life issues it brings, aside from the fact that it makes people more comfortable to interact with the police and the government on a daily basis, uh, Getting a license is also important um, because in states where, where this has been implemented, the 13 states in the United States where, where, license, where you can now get a license without showing, um, where all you have to show is residency or paying taxes, uh, the number of hit and run accidents goes down. Um, it's shown that the driving behavior is more safe, there's, more, there's fewer accidents. Uh, you have more people paying into the insurance pool which means everybody spends, it, 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 that lowers the rates for everybody else paying insurance. If you have everybody in the community paying into the insurance pool, that makes it cheaper for everybody else. The state is collecting licensing revenue. You know, in Virginia, it's $4 a year to get a, to get a license. If, um, if we have another 100,000, 200,000 people getting licenses, you know, take that one by four, that's almost a million dollars a year if, of the new revenue to the state if, if 200,000 people get these licenses. And so, um, you know, I only see, um, any, anything but upside with all this. And I think it's, it's, it's an issue that we need to address so that people can live in our community and feel comfortable living in our community and live, live a high quality of life like everybody else. And so I'm, I'm proud to be here and proud to support it. I appreciate all you being here as well. Thank you very much, Senator. <laughs> That's a continuing presentation, Delegate Kate Corey. Thank you very much for your support in the past and what you're doing today. Good morning. I'm Kay Corey. I represent the 38th district, which is Fairfax County, Annandale, 
Greater Falls Church, all within the Beltway. And everything that Senator Sorbel said about his district applies to my district as well. Those of you who are from Northern Virginia know very well that the expanding population inside the Beltway and Fairfax is just exploding. Um, this year and last year, in an effort to begin to chip away at the problems in the Virginia Code that deal with driving privileges, I put in a bill that would make sure that those, that those Virginians who are here, basically at the request of the federal government, who are here absolutely legally, and there's no question about that, there are a number of categories that are not allowed to drive which is shocking. A constituent wrote me a letter two years ago that he's here uh, applying for asylum. He brought his family. He's been here now maybe three years going through <coughs> the judicial process, and he's not allowed to drive. He can't get a permit. He can't get privileges. He can't get any kind of authorization to drive. So for him and his family, it's an economic issue. And frankly, for me, it's a civil rights issue uh, there's absolutely no reason to deny driving privileges to someone who's here seeking asylum. And there are a few other categories of people who are really disadvantaged by not being offered driving privileges who are here and are becoming American citizens. One other category is abused spouses of American citizens who've gotten married abroad, been brought over to the United States, the American spouse <coughs> has not filed the paperwork, so that person doesn't have a legal status. There are a number of women in this category, and then they've been able to more or less escape and go to a shelter, and they are really in economic difficulty. They're not allowed to drive either. So this is really important. This is the beginning. There's no reason why the Virginia Code should prevent people like this from having a driver's license. They contribute to the economy. They have families that need to be able to participate fully. Last year, this bill was heard several times in, um, in the courts committee. And frankly, the members of that committee couldn't really find a reason not to vote for it. But they uh, decided on party lines not to vote for it. And Asked me to come back this year, so I am coming back, and I will let all of you know, I will let Dr. Long know when this is scheduled to be heard, and I hope that you will all come speak, sit there, you know, look angry, look energetic, do whatever you have to do. It's HB 695, and again, it's almost a crime that the code, that the state of Virginia won't allow these people. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much for your support as well. Thank you so Let's much. For, you. Yes, absolutely. I'm Delegate Jennifer Boisco. I represent the 86th District. That is in the western part of Fairfax County, primarily in the Hunden region. It's also one of the most, most richly diverse communities in, in the, the, the Commonwealth. We're a, approximately 50% minority. 21% Latino, 21% Asian American, and 80% um, African American. We too have members of our community who are not authorized to uh, drive. And my bill will create a driving authorization card for applicants who are granted a period of stay authorized by the Attorney General of the United States, but not recognized in Virginia to, to <coughs> drive. This is a common sense solution. We know that as, as my colleagues have mentioned already, we have people who are here trying to work every day, take care of their children, get back and forth. We wanna make sure that they have um, proper driving lessons going through um, driver's education and, and are, are on the street legally and with authorization. Um, I look forward to hearing this in the transportation committee and I thank you all. Thank you very much. Now, I got Alfonso Lopez. Thank you so very much for your support, man. Hola, gente. Mi nombre es Alfonso Lopez. Soy el primer delegado del Partido Demócrata Latino in Lance Story in Virginia. Hello. My name is Alfonso Lopez. I'm the first Latino Democrat ever elected to Virginia General Assembly. 
Um, these issues uh, of baccalaureus, not just with regard to uh, the driver's license issue, but the suit with regard to affordable housing, um, fairness with regard to procurement, fairness with regard to small business, are issues that I care deeply about and are incredible, incredibly important for my community. There are 108 languages spoken in my district, 58 languages spoken in my local high school. Um, <coughs> the rich tapestry of what Virginia is becoming is the 49th House Delegates District. The Bacalao is a, a vital part of my community and represents something inherently good and positive about the future. And the issues that you're working on are the issues of this new generation of Virginians. And so I also have a similar bill to um, everyone else on licenses, but I'm also working on things like the DREAM Act and the reg or regulatory process with CHEV on, uh, on, and moving that ball forward. I'm also working on things, as I said before, about the redefinition of small business so that it's more fair with regard to um, minorities and women, not just a fairly one-size-fits-all approach to small business. Um, but we have to remember also that Bacalao's issues are not just Latino issues. They're American issues. They're Virginian issues. And that gets lost a lot of the time as we try to divide people by red and blue and by northern and southern Virginians and by what a real Virginian is versus a new immigrant or someone of Latino heritage. And those kind of visions, I think, are ugly and backward, and they move us in the wrong direction. And so when I talk about Bacalao's issues on the floor today, I'll be talking about them not in terms of Latino issues, but in terms of these are Virginia issues. So thank you for being here today, and thank you for your advocacy. And I want to especially thank my longtime friend, Dr. <coughs> Escobar and Walter Tejada, Lee Niederman, his uh, incredible wife, Lenny, and Beatrice uh, for being here. So thank you very, very much. Thank you very much, Alfonso. Yeah. And now, I would like to invite someone who is directly affected by the driver's license issue uh, to say a few words. Maria Camino, pase la palabra suya. Muy buenos días a todos. Me siento muy feliz de estar aquí representando a muchas personas que es un privilegio tener la licencia, pero nosotros vemos, lo vemos también como una gran necesidad. Necesitamos llevar a nuestros hijos a la escuela, al doctor, y tenemos miedo de salir y que nos tome la policía y nuestros hijos <coughs> se lleven un, una experiencia muy desagradable que les puede afectar a ellos emocionalmente o, no sé, el ver la vida diferente. Me duele ver muchas personas que no tienen un bus donde puedan ir a las citas o ir a hacer sus actividades. Tienen que caminar 30 minutos o 45 en la carretera. Tienen que cruzar a veces en donde hay mucha nieve o cuando está llovido. Es muy peligroso, es muy, es muy triste y muy difícil. Nosotros queremos esa oportunidad de las licencias para que nos identifiquen. Queremos que, que, que nos vean que somos personas que queremos educar a nuestros hijos, ayudarlos a crecer para esta gran nación. En nuestros países no tenemos esas mismas oportunidades que ellos tienen aquí. Y yo admiro este país porque le gusta la educación. Yo crecí con ese interés de, de la educación. Nunca pude tener esa oportunidad porque allá normalmente las personas van a la primaria. Yo quiero que nos, nuestros hijos tengan esa oportunidad de educarse y ellos pueden tener un mejor futuro y mejor futuro para este país. Virginia es por los. Yo amo Virginia. Y creo en Virginia y voy a seguir viviendo en Virginia, creyendo en ella, haciendo grande este estado de Virginia, que es el centro de todo este país. Gracias. Okay. And now we'll hear from the chair of the of Bacolao, Mr. Edgar Aranda. Uh, muy buenos días.
días y muchísimas gracias a, por esta oportunidad. Eh, el día de hoy realmente es muy importante por cuanto representa eh, los intereses eh, de los latinos en Virginia. Estamos luchando el día de hoy por los intereses de Virginia, de los latinos eh, y muchísimos, miles, miles de personas que no pueden eh, conducir tranquilamente porque simplemente no tienen la licencia de conducir. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, today is very important for us. We are fighting for uh, for Latino community. And driver license is one of the biggest issues. We have seen how many people are sending us a lot of messages. They are visiting us on Facebook, on, on our website, sending us a lot of messages that we don't know what to do. And I am very happy that Senator Surabell uh, introduced this bill because this is a very important bill that will provide driver license for everybody. And, and this also will impact economically to our economy. It will be positive, everybody will have uh, insurance, uh, everybody will know uh, the, rules, the rules of driving. And so I do not see any uh, side down of having a driver license. Uh, I just want to read this. Our communities and economy are stronger when more residents are able to participate in everyday life without breaking the rules of the road by driving without a license. Immigrants with driver license will also, uh, also fear law enforcement less, increasing cooperation between immigrant communities and law enforcement, when, uh, which will facilitate effective community policy efforts and help lower and crime rate. This is very important, and we are uh, here to uh, advocate for this issue. And of course, we are also advocating for Medicaid expansion, which is so much needed for our community. And thank you very much. And so we will be here the whole day uh, doing this event a lot of legislators. Thank you, Adrian. And now I'd like to introduce the Vice Chair of Bacolao, Beatriz Thank you very much. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you, Senator Surovel and delegates K. Corey, Bosco, and Alfonso Lopez. Today, I congratulate Virginians that are fortunate to be represented by you. And I take the opportunity to call for your colleagues to support your initiatives in regards to expanded access to driver licenses for immigrants. Let me assure you that you have the support of many organizations, the Virginia Coalition of Latino Organizations and Latinos everywhere in our state. No longer it is believable that withholding driver licenses for immigrants is beneficial to anyone in any way. And this issue should not be used for partisan politics. It is time to put Virginia's security and safety first, while at the same time we stimulate our economy. Everyone driving in our Commonwealth should pass our driving tests and prove that they recognize highway and safety signs. This will support the work of our law enforcement officers and our courts by making sure that everyone that comes in contact with them is able to provide their real identity and address. <coughs> this is actually what will keep Virginia safe. Decrease the numbers of uninsured vehicles on the road and minimizing the hit and run incidents in our roads. Compare all of this, all these benefits to what it is now being experienced in our state, which is we have drivers right now everywhere that are not registered. So this is only a few of the benefits. Providing limited duration driver licenses will bring added revenue to Virginia. Insurance companies will receive increased revenues and new drivers will be able to buy more cars, go spend their money on gas and shop everywhere. So this is an issue of justice, but not just for immigrants. This is an issue of justice for all Virginians. And let me tell you that we are here to call an end to partisanship 
on this issue and request action to keep all Virginians safe. We ask you to leave politics aside and act as a statement for the benefit of all Virginians. Thank you so very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Bowden. And uh, with our limited time, that concludes our press conference.